Hello friend, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky if you're new, and today we are going to prep this week's dinners. I have four dinner recipes that I wanna make. I have a very busy week this week, and I thought of this new way to meal prep, and I wanna see if it works and how well it works. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna get a sheet pan dinner going for dinner tonight. And I'm gonna get that in the oven. We are gonna make chili honey chicken with sweet potato and cauliflower. And then we're gonna make a yogurt sauce to go on the top, a jalapeno cilantro yogurt sauce. And then while dinner tonight is cooking, I'm gonna prep some other meals for this week. One that's gonna go in the instant pot, one that's gonna go in the crock pot, and one that's gonna go on the grill. So my goal is to try to get all four dinners prepped, meal prepped, while dinner is cooking tonight, so that during the rest of the week, I can focus on projects, appointments, things that are not spending time in the kitchen, because I've got some fun things I wanna get to, and I wanna make kitchen work something that I don't even have to think about. So we are going to meal prep our dinners. So I'm just peeling my sweet potatoes here, trying to get the peels into <laughs> the compost bowl and not onto the floor and the counter. When I was thinking of these recipes, I tried to shop my freezer, my pantry, and my refrigerator before I went to the grocery store. And so that's kind of what I based these recipes around, things that I already had. I had this cauliflower that needed to be used up. The recipe that I'm getting inspired for this recipe did not have cauliflower in the actual recipe, but I need to use this cauliflower. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on the sheet pan and cook it up with the rest of the meal. I'm gonna go ahead and break this into florets. And I'm gonna leave the cauliflower a little bit bigger than I probably normally would because I want everything to cook at the same time in the oven. And so the cauliflower is gonna take a little less time to cook than our sweet potato. So I'm just gonna leave it a little bit bigger so that they all can kind of cook at the same rate. When I make sheet pan dinners, I love using parchment paper. It just makes cleanup so much easier. So I'm gonna give myself the gift of parchment paper. And I'm gonna get my cauliflower on one end here. I'm gonna go ahead and chop the sweet potato next. I'm gonna cut these into strips and I'm gonna cut them pretty small so that they cook pretty quickly or the same rate as my cauliflower and the chicken, because we're gonna cook all of the components of tonight's dinner on this one cookie sheet. One reason I like meal prepping when I can or batch cooking is because I'm going to use the same cutting board multiple times for multiple meals this week. And it's just less dishes overall I'm gonna to have to do. And because I'm gonna kind of messy up the kitchen just a little bit today, I won't have to messy up the kitchen for the rest of the week because all of my meals will already be prepped. So we need to prep some chicken for our sheet pan dinner and I need to prep some chicken for our white chicken chili. So I'm gonna grab out a fresh cutting board and a fresh knife and we're gonna use this cutting board and this knife for the chicken for the white chicken chili and for our sheet pan dinner. And I need a bowl for the sheet pan dinner because we're gonna make kind of like a, a quick marinade we're gonna put on the chicken. For the sheet pan dinner, I'm gonna keep these chicken thighs whole. I have boneless, skinless chicken thighs here. I'm gonna cut off any excess fat and I'm gonna get those chicken thighs right into this bowl where we're gonna make the marinade for the chicken. And I'm gonna do four chicken thighs for the sheet pan dinner. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to dice up four chicken thighs for our white chicken chili. 
and I will cut off any big pieces of fat for this as well. And we'll get this into our instant pot liner. I'm using chicken thighs here, but of course you could use chicken breast, you can use whatever is your favorite cut of meat. I think chicken thighs just give a little bit more grace when it comes to overcooking, especially for the sheet pan dinner. But, and I had these in my freezer. If I only had chicken breasts in my freezer, I probably would have used those instead. So we're gonna get the chicken thighs in here. We have one more chicken recipe, and I'm gonna use chicken breast for this because this is what I had out thawed. And I'm gonna thinly slice this chicken breast for our peanut satay. It's kind of like a peanut curry almost. It's absolutely delicious. And we're gonna get this in the crock pot. So the goal is to try to utilize my appliances to make my life easier. So if you wanted to do the same concept, you could have your favorite dump and go instant pot recipe, favorite dump and go crock pot recipe, a sheet pan dinner, and maybe a dinner on the stove, and you could prep it all at one time, and then the morning of, or the evening of, turn your crock pot on, turn your instant pot on, and then you have a really quick dinner that is freshly cooked that day for your family. So here's the last chicken recipe. We are doing a beef recipe as well. I'm gonna get this chicken in my crock pot liner. Then I'm gonna pop the crock pot and my instant pot liner in the fridge while we finish up the sheet pan dinner. Now we're gonna go ahead and season our chicken. This is a little bit of honey that I just warmed up for about 10 seconds or so, so that it would come out really liquidy and coat the chicken really well. Now we're gonna season with salt. Now the recipe I found that I'm gonna link that I'm inspired by for this called for chili powder, but I thought chipotle powder would be really good on this, so I'm gonna substitute chipotle powder. We have black pepper, roasted garlic powder, ginger, and some olive oil. And that's how easy our simple marinade for our chicken is gonna be. We're gonna stir this together, get that well coated and incorporated. The honey on this chicken is gonna help really brown up the chicken really, really well. Now this came together even faster than I anticipated. So our first dinner is done, plus two of our proteins for our other dinners are prepped. We just need to lay these chicken thighs out on this section that we have left on our baking sheet. This is a very large baking sheet, which is perfect for sheet pan dinners, so you can get everything to fit. We still need to season our sweet potatoes and our cauliflower. So I'm gonna do that next. And I don't want any of this goodness to go to waste. So what I'm gonna do is take my spatula and just kind of pour any of this honey, chili, chipotle mixture right over the top. That looks delicious. I'm gonna get this in the dishwasher. And now let's go ahead and season up our vegetables. I'm gonna go ahead and use olive oil and all of the same seasonings except for the honey on the vegetables. So they have kind of the same flavor profile. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some roasted garlic powder on here. I can link this roasted garlic powder. It's one of my mom's and I's favorite spice, and I think I can find it online to link it for you. Now pepper, chipotle powder, and of course, salt. My mom used to make a cauliflower recipe that had all these same kind of flavors, but she also would put some fresh lime zest on it, and this just made me think of that, and I have limes, we're gonna use limes for some other recipes today. So I thought I am gonna go ahead and get some lime zest, and I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna put some fresh lime juice on this cauliflower as well, and that will help brighten things up. My cutting board is here. We are gonna make a yogurt sauce to go on the top of this, which will help kind of brighten things up as well. 
but I think a little bit of lime on that is gonna be perfect. And while I'm at it, just a little bit of lime juice on the chicken as well. And now I'm gonna get in there with my hands and I'm going to mix together the sweet potatoes with the oil and spices. And I didn't even preheat my oven yet <laughs> because I didn't think it was gonna come together quite this quickly. I should have known. So I need to get my oven preheated, preheating, and then we can get dinner in the oven, and then we can go ahead and keep going on the rest of the week's dinners. Lay that out. I'm gonna mix up the cauliflower. You could of course do this in another bowl as well and toss the seasonings just like I did with the chicken in another bowl with the cauliflower and the sweet potato, but I wanted as few dishes as possible. <laughs> so I'm just doing it right here on the sheet pan. I'm gonna set dinner over here, get the oven preheated, and dinner is almost done. A really easy way to kind of elevate a simple dinner like a sheet pan dinner is to make a really quick sauce, which is what we're doing here. And we're gonna make a yogurt, cilantro, jalapeno, delicious sauce to go on top. So I have some Greek yogurt here, and I'm gonna get half of the amount of Greek yogurt we're gonna to use today into the food processor. I just got two of these little containers at the store. This was one thing I did need to pick up at the store today. And then I'm gonna get the other half of the Greek yogurt we're gonna to use today into the container we're going to store our sauce in here. I've got my veggies for the sauce. So we have some green onions, a jalapeno, and some cilantro that I've pre-washed. And we're gonna use the rest of that lime that we put on our cauliflower in this sauce. So it kind of worked out perfect. I am doubling the sauce recipe because we love a good sauce around here and it will not go to waste. I'm gonna season my sauce with some of the same things I seasoned the chicken and vegetables with. So we have garlic, salt, and a little bit of chipotle powder. We're gonna get this chopped up along with the juice of our lime. We're gonna get all that goodness in there. So I wanna give this a taste test before I take it out of the food processor. Ooh, that's got a little kick to it. I left the seeds in that jalapeno. You, of course, could remove the seeds, but I like the warmth that that adds. That is fantastic. I don't think it needs any salt. It doesn't need any more citrus or anything. That is perfect. I'm gonna get our sauce into the yogurt, and I'm gonna mix that in. The reason I wanted to test it before I took it out of the food processor is just because in case I needed to add anything, it would be easier to blend it into the food processor. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my spatula here and mix it in with that yogurt. I'm gonna grab a new spoon and taste it one more time just to make sure it's perfect. And let's see how this is. That does mild out that jalapeno just a little bit and that is fantastic. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and I think our oven, our oven still isn't even preheated yet. That's how quick and easy it is to make a fantastic sauce to just bring your dish over the top. So into the fridge this goes, and then we can get going on the chicken satay and the white chicken chili. Oh, we've got our beef dish we need to make too. Maybe let's go ahead and get the crock pot and Instapot pot ones done first because those are gonna be so incredibly easy. I have my recipe here. I'm just gonna go through and grab all the ingredients I need for this recipe. This is a delicious dump and go recipe. Getting all of our spices out, our peanut butter, yellow curry powder. I didn't grab that out yet. And in this one, it calls for ginger and garlic. Instead of using the powdered stuff that I already have out, I think I'm gonna grab some of my fresh frozen. Oh, lime juice. All right, I have all the ingredients I need out for this recipe, so let's just dump it all in and get this dinner ready. 
First, I have my chicken in here. Next, I'm gonna add some ginger. This is just some fresh ginger I peeled and grated and froze, and that was garlic. So we've got ginger, garlic, chicken. Now I'm gonna add about a half a cup of peanut butter, which this is the part that makes it the peanut satay. Curry powder. Garam masala, sesame oil, soy sauce or tamari, couple tablespoons of honey, fresh lime juice, and I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the entire lime in here. And last but not least, to finish out this recipe is one can of full fat coconut milk. I'm gonna go ahead and mix all these ingredients together. There's the peanut butter in here and that needs to kind of be spread around a little bit. This recipe makes a fantastic freezer meal. I have made this as a freezer meal before and you can cook this either in the Instant Pot, there are directions on the written recipe, or in the Crock Pot, but I made it in the Crock Pot last time I pulled this out of the freezer and made it, and it was so delicious. I figured I would go ahead and make it the same way this time. So I'm just stirring all this together. The peanut butter is now mixed in there well. The garlic and ginger is still completely frozen, so I'll give this another stir tomorrow, or whenever I end up making this this week. But that is our second dinner done. I do want to take my spatula and run it along the edges just so that it doesn't burn when it's cooking. My dishwasher is unloaded so I can just get that right in there. We're gonna use the lid to cover this. But I'm just gonna scrape the sides just like that. Pop that in the sink this time. Lid on, second dinner is done. I can see that my oven now is preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the sheet pan dinner in the oven. And then we're gonna make our Instant Pot dinner once I get this in the fridge. Now I'm just grabbing a few of the ingredients we need for our white chicken chili. Again, I shopped my pantry shelves for some home canned goods. I'm looking for my knife here. We do need one onion diced. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done first. This recipe doesn't need a ton of vegetables prepped for it, so it makes it really, really easy. Got my compost bowl here, I'm gonna get my onion peels in. I'm going to serve my chicken satay with some sauteed green beans and white rice. And so I will get the green beans washed and the stems cleaned today so that those will be done and ready to go as well the day of. I cook that dinner and I won't have to worry about washing and dicing or cutting the stems off the green beans. So my onion is now diced for my white chicken chili. We have our Instant Pot lighter with our chicken in it already. So to that, we'll just add our onions that we just diced up. The beef dish that we're making, we're making a kebab recipe. It has a lot of the same ingredients we used for the chicken satay. And this recipe also has a lot of the ingredients we use for the chicken satay. So I haven't put any of my spices or soy sauce or anything like that away yet because we're just gonna continue to use the same ingredients in multiple recipes today. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my jarred goods and some diced chilies. So I do need to go ahead and open one jar. Now I have a larger Jar, I think the recipe calls for four ounces, yes. And this is a seven ounce jar of diced green chilies. I went with the mild on this. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the whole thing. I don't know what I would do with just a partial jar of those anytime in the coming future. So we're just gonna add that into there. And then I've got three home can jars. This first one is homemade chicken broth. The second one is home canned corn. The recipe calls for frozen corn, but I like to use my canned corn for cooked dishes like this, and so this is a great way to use my jarred corn. And then I've got some white beans here. 
I think these are navy beans. The recipe calls for white kidney beans. I'm just gonna use the kind of beans I have on hand. So we're gonna get these in here as well. One jar of those. Now we need to season this. I've got cumin, black pepper. I'm gonna use two kinds of garlic. I'm gonna use some of my roasted garlic powder and one of my frozen garlic pucks. Lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir. And I almost forgot one ingredient. The last ingredient is four ounces of cream cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in there now. And now we have all of our components for our white chicken chili done, except for the good toppings we're gonna to put on after this is cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and get this covered using my Dutch oven lid. I have found that fits perfectly. I don't have one of the Instant Pot lids, but this works perfect. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and then on the night this week that I need it, I'll put it in my Instant Pot, set it for 15. You know, I might do it a little bit longer because it's gonna be so cold. The ingredients aren't gonna all be room temperature like my beans and broth. So I might set it for maybe 16 or 17 minutes and then dinner is done. I am gonna serve this with some lime, cilantro, sour cream, cheese, and I have all of that in my fridge. I'll just get that out and chips on the night that I make this. So two of our meals done. This is not even halfway cooked, so we should be able to get our beef dinner done as well and our green beans prepped before dinner tonight is ready to come out of the oven. Pop this in the fridge. Now we are getting ready to make our beef dish and this is gonna be perfect because this needs to marinate for 24 hours or it'll probably be about 18 hours, I guess. No, it'll be about 24 hours, so this will be perfect. So I'll make this tomorrow on the grill and it's gonna be just so delicious. So what I've got here is some green pepper and red pepper and I'm gonna to try to get as much of that off there as possible. We're gonna make our marinade in here and we're going to skewer our kebabs today. So it's one less thing I'm gonna to need to do when we go to cook this dinner. So I'm going to keep the vegetables and the meat separate on the kebabs just because that helps with cooking. You can get a more even cook on your kebabs when you cook the vegetables and meat separately. So I have red onion here, a green bell pepper, and a red bell pepper. I'm gonna keep these pretty good sized chunks. I love the way vegetables grill up on the grill. In the recipe, it states to interweave the vegetables and the meat. But again, I have found when it comes to grilling, the meat is usually not done at the same time that the vegetables are. So I kind of like to do them separate. So that's what I'm gonna do. Plus I'm gonna have the meat down in the marinade and the vegetables will be on top. So it'll just be easier in the long run. I can smell this and it smells Incredible. It still has got quite a bit of time left. So we're definitely gonna get all of this done by the time dinner's done. And I think I'll even be able to clean up. So far, this meal prep is working pretty well. I am I think that I'm gonna like this, where I can prep multiple dinners in a row while I have dinner cooking. I've kind of done something like this similar, but not quite. And the night that we have this, so I think tomorrow night, I'm not gonna cook another side. This is just gonna be vegetables on the grill and steak on the grill. So it's gonna be a really easy dinner. But if you wanted, if you had this dinner, you could cook up some noodles for the side or some throw some potatoes in the oven to roast. If you wanted a starch along with this one. But I think on this night, we're just gonna have vegetables and steak. It's gonna be delicious. The sun has been coming out lately, 
and it's getting me so excited for being outside and garden season and grilling. <laughs> That's actually why I wanted to do this because I need to start a bunch of seeds. I actually need to start my pepper seeds this week. I need to start a lot more flower seeds. And so I need to spend more time outside in the garden. Josh and I have a project at some point this week we wanna to get to out in the garden. That might not be till this weekend. We're not sure when we're gonna to get to it, but my focus is on some of those other fun projects. So if I could do my future self a gift by spending a little extra time in the kitchen today, then I will have the gift of time later this week, not worrying about meals. These kebabs look so good. They're so beautiful. Between the red onion, the red, which is purple, and the green pepper, they're beautiful. And they actually made way more kebabs than I was anticipating. Just one red onion, one green onion, and one red onion, we got two, four, six vegetable kebabs. I think it was you all that gave me the idea to cook the vegetables and the beef separately. Last summer, I had had a barbecue over here and I made something similar to this and I put everything on the same kebabs. And you said, everything will cook a little bit more evenly if I do it separate. Okay, so this is just the inner part of the onion. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that because that's not gonna skewer up very well. Get that in the compost bowl. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make my marinade right in this bowl or container that I'm gonna marinate the meat in. So again, I have one less dish to clean. The first time I made this marinade, I wasn't sure about how well this was gonna turn out. You're gonna see it's a very unique combination of ingredients, but let me tell you, it is so incredibly delicious on beef and vegetables. So the first thing I added in there was soy sauce. This was olive oil. Now we need to get lemon juice. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna squeeze this. If we get a little extra lemon juice in there, that's okay. But I do love this recipe so much, I wanna get it pretty close. Boop. I can leave that in there. Because the ratios of lemon juice to soy sauce to, which you'll see in just a minute, Worcestershire sauce is just absolutely delicious. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna need another half of a lemon. That's perfect, I'm just gonna get that in there. I'm gonna put this half a lemon in there as well, mine as well. This is Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna put black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, not too much salt, little bit though, and Italian seasoning. I'm gonna whisk this together. So you can kind of see how it's kind of a random mixture of ingredients, but let me tell you this marinade is absolutely delicious. So now we need to get our beef ready for this. Before I get the beef out to get it on the kebabs to get into this marinade, I have all these spices out and sauces and oils and things. I don't need them anymore. I should be done with all of these ingredients for the rest of the week. So I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get all of this put away so that it's one less thing I'm gonna have to think about. I can just get this put away and then we can get the meat out. I still need to wash the green beans but I'm not gonna season those at all because I'm just gonna wash them, cut the tops off, and then I'm gonna cook those in the crock pot. And they have plenty of seasoning with that chicken satay. It smells incredible in here. I just checked on our chicken and it is still not done, but it is starting to get a nice color to it and it smells incredible. There we go. We got all of our ingredients now put away. So now I can get a, one of my meat cutting boards out. And I need, I only have one more kebab. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple more of these. Slide this down here. Probably need one, maybe six. So two, four, six. I'll get eight out and whatever I don't end up using, I can just go ahead and toss. The cut of meat I have here is a tri-tip steak 
And this has worked in the past for me really well when it comes to making kebabs. So I'm gonna cut these in about one inch cubes or bite size, and then we'll get them on our skewers. If there's any big pieces of fat on them, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off because we're gonna cook these at a pretty high temperature and cook them pretty quickly. So I don't know if all that fat will be able to render out in the time we're gonna cook them on the grill. So once I have, I don't know, two, four, five-ish pieces on a skewer, then I'm gonna go ahead and get it in our marinade and I'm gonna roll it around just a little bit. This is one of our favorite summertime meals. Anytime we just cook a protein and veggies on the grill, we love it. And I am making this because I am dreaming of summer days. We're not quite there yet, but we can at least enjoy one of our favorite summer meals in preparation for the warmer weather that is to come. I want my veggies to have some of this yummy flavor as well. Oop, we lost a pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in here as well. Get them coated in this marinade. This also worked out really well, not only because it was prepped in advance, so on the night that I cooked this, I didn't have to think about, you know, prepping dinner, but also whenever I want to have a meat that's marinated, I don't usually think about it in time. So like in the morning, I don't usually think, oh, I should marinate the meat so it can marinate for a few hours. So prepping it in advance really helped me because by the time these were ready to cook, they were marinated perfectly and they were ready to go for me and I didn't have to think about it in the morning. I'm gonna get this covered and this will be waiting for us when I'm ready to cook it. I'm gonna pop this in the outside fridge, but this marinade smells fantastic already. I'm excited for this. This is gonna be a really simple dinner. This is all that we're gonna have for dinner, but like I said, you could serve this over rice, you could make roast potatoes, but this is gonna be a delicious dinner when we have it. I wanna take a look at this. Okay, that looks like it's got just a few more minutes. So we are gonna have time to go ahead and wash our green beans. I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna have time for that. I did just go get these green beans and they look beautiful. It's making me really excited for this summer's garden. So I'm gonna wash these really well. And then all I'm gonna do for these green beans is just snap the blossom end off or the end where the green bean was attached to the plant. And then I will just throw these into the crock pot when the chicken satay only has about 30 minutes left to go. And I'll let these cook in with the chicken, and then we'll serve this over rice. So with the chicken satay, I will make rice for it. So all the green beans now are snapped. So I'm gonna get these in a container so that they'll be ready for us. How awesome is that? I don't even have to wash green beans. Into the fridge. I'm about to pull the sheet pan dinner out of the oven, but here is all that we got done and prepped and ready for this week. Our kebabs that are gonna go on the grill tomorrow are instant pot white chicken chili that I will probably make next because I will need my instant pot liner when I go ahead and I make my peanut chicken satay. We also got the green beans done and we have the sauce that is gonna go on that dinner. And I'm really excited for tonight's dinner. It smells incredible and it's looking very delicious as well. So I'm gonna pop these back in the fridge. These are already done, ready for later meals this week. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is all cooked perfection. This is how I'm gonna serve it up. The sweet potatoes are nice and soft. 
the cauliflower because I left it so large it has some good texture left to it it's not fully soft so there's some crunch and look how caramelized our chicken got because of the little bit of honey those pieces are going to be the best right there so I'm going to give those to Josh and then I don't want to forget the beautiful yogurt herb sauce we made we'll get that on top of everything and that is Monday night's dinner and that is going to be one delicious dinner thank you for joining me for Monday night I will show you how the rest of these meals come together throughout the rest of the week and I think this is going to be pretty easy. It took me about 45-ish minutes with actual working time getting these meals put together. So, you know, I had to get this dinner in the oven and cooking, but I was able to get the other three meals done and prepped and ready to go in the time it took for this sheet pan dinner to be done. So I think moving forward, this is gonna be a really good meal prep idea for me for the week on these weeks where I have really, really busy days ahead of me. I do want to take a quick bite of this and tell you how the chicken turned out. Maybe I'll add a little bit of sweet potato, sweet potato chicken and that sauce. This is one of my favorite things. A really good flavored chicken, sweet potatoes with a yogurt herb sauce. Hard to go wrong. Cauliflower is still crunchy. This is going to be a good dinner. Thanks for being with me as we prep this. Let's see how the rest of these dinners come together throughout this week. The next meal I prepped was the white chicken chili and I put that in my instant pot and I got that going first. And then I decided to wash and chop up a bunch of herbs. And these are some herbs that I'm gonna use later in the week as well. I could have prepped these when I prepped all the rest of the meals, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> and so I'm just prepping it on this night. I love cooking with fresh herbs. I think it just, is delicious and so it's something that i usually have in my refrigerator is parsley cilantro and green onion and here i just have cilantro and green onion got that washed and diced and then i had an avocado and i'm going to cube that up and these are going to be our condiments for our white chicken chili once i get the avocado cut i am going to shred up some cheese i could have done this as well when i prepped the rest of the meals but it slipped my mind and so I'm just going to go ahead and shred this up. This is way more cheese than we need for the white chicken chili, but I like shredding my own cheese. So anytime I shred cheese, I usually go ahead and I just shred the whole block and then it's prepped in my fridge for later use. So that's what I did. So the white chicken chili, the cream cheese needs to stir in quite a bit. So you do need to stir it a little bit. And this is how we served it. Some cheese, sour cream, fresh herbs, some chips, fresh citrus, and of course, some hot sauce. It was fantastic. Now on this next day, this has me so excited for summer. We are in false spring right now. It's February and the last couple days have been in the high 50s and it feels like summer, even though um, we could get snow still. And so I decided to take the advantage of the nice sunny weather and go ahead and do one of our favorite summer dinners, which is just a protein and fresh summer veggies off the garden, on the grill. So yummy, so fresh, we love this. And it was perfect on this night when the sun decided to grace us with its presence. So here I cook these kebabs to about medium. You can of course cook them more on the rare side or more on the well done side, whatever your preference is. I didn't take temperatures or anything. I just did the feel method and they turned out fantastic. The veggies though, I was surprised. They did take a little bit longer to cook than the meat. So I just rotated those on the grill and then once they were done, I took them off the grill. I brought them inside. I let the meat rest for about 10 minutes before we had dinner. But before we had dinner, I did go ahead and I served it with some of our pre-chopped fresh herbs. And I did end up putting out some of our yogurt sauce to dip the meat in because that yogurt sauce was amazing and we still had some from earlier in the week. So that is the kebabs and veggies off the grill. The next recipe is the crock pot meal. I put that on 
low for about four hours and then they had about a half an hour left i threw on some green beans i let the green beans cook for about a half an hour and then i served this up with some fresh steamed rice our chicken satay and green beans are done i'm going to move apart the green beans just a little bit to get to the curry i should probably turn it down because it's definitely done it smells so good in here the sauce is nice and thickened. I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more green beans and sauce onto the rice. I still have some leftover herbs. I'm gonna go ahead and top that with a little bit of cilantro and some green onions just to add a nice fresh crunch and herbaceous note to that. And now we can give this a taste test. The steak kebabs turned out so well. And the white chicken chili was really good too. It's hard to go wrong with white chicken chili. And this is probably one of my favorites out of all that we've made. Oh no, the sheet pan dinner was really good. And the steak was really good. They've all been so good. But I do love this peanut satay. It is one of my favorite crock pot meals because it just cooks down and gets so rich and very, very flavorful. So I have a little bit of chicken, some of the sauce, rice and our herbs. It's so incredibly hot and it was so nice just throwing those pre-washed green beans in the crock pot and not even really having to worry about washing the green beans. Mm -hmm. I've definitely had a hard time cooking really depth of flavor curries in the crock pot, but this one I think because it has so much peanut butter in it, it kind of has a different note. It thickens up really nicely. It gets really rich and it's just really, really good. And I really like that the chicken is sliced really, really thinly. I just like how that cooks up in the crock pot as opposed to throwing in a whole chicken breast and like shredding it. Because when I think of curry, if I go out to a restaurant, the curries typically have really thinly sliced chicken in it as opposed to shredded chicken. So I just think that texture is better and that is fantastic. Friend, that meal prep worked so incredibly fantastic. I'm gonna think of other recipes and other ways I could do that where I could spend like an hour in the kitchen, cook dinner and also prep two or three other dinners so that on the night that I need to cook something, I don't have to do all the prep, it's already prepped, but I can still have a freshly cooked dinner for my family very, very easily. So friend, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, would you please give it a thumbs up? If you're new, consider subscribing. I would welcome you to join along the journey. And if you enjoyed this and you wanna watch a few of my other videos, I'll pop some here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.